<laughs> so welcome this morning. Um, I want to thank Pastor Josh and the staff for just giving me the opportunity to come up here and share with you guys this morning. Thank you guys for being here. Um, I know the traffic's been really crazy and the, the heat waves are currently keeping everybody away. Um, but I just think that over the last 21 days of prayer, I feel like something's really been stirred up in me. And I really think that um, I have something to share today. And I hope that it's something in you all too. Um, they just gave me this microphone and said I could do whatever I want and say whatever I want. So, uh, hello. <laughs> when I was thinking about what I wanted to talk to you guys about today, I really didn't know. And I thought, well, maybe I'll just come up here and give my testimony. But when I saw, thought about what that looked like, I realized that I don't really have one yet. Um, I feel like my story is still being written and that God's still working in me. And so I thought, well, I'll just get up here and talk about something easy, something that I can just blurt out quickly and get off the stage and pray for my dignity. <laughs> <laughs> and over the last week, I've heard a lot of really good speakers and a lot of people telling great stories and testimonies. And it's really hard not to compare yourself to other people. We live in a world of comparison and we constantly compare ourselves to others. We set up a life in our minds that looks like a perfectly orchestrated Pinterest board. We are all imperfect, we know that, and our lives aren't defined by those perfectly curated highlight reels. It's messy. Comparing yourself to someone else is unrealistic. We can't compare ourselves to Pastor Josh. We can't compare ourselves to Katie. We can't do that because God created us to be set apart. He gave each of us, this is some advice that was given to me, He gave each of us a specific voice for a specific purpose to reach a specific group of people. Yeah, that's and you might not even know who that is. When I was growing up, I had a plan for my life. I was going to go to nursing school. I was going to marry my boyfriend, probably a doctor, for sure a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. Have babies. Twins, probably. Um, a nice house, a nice car. And all those things sound really, really great. And of course they do, because they're perfect and they're worldly. But in that list, where was God? Where did God fit into my perfect picture? And I didn't have time to think about that because I was going to start that journey to my perfect life. So I graduated high school and I got accepted into nursing school. And that was really, really hard for me. I struggled. I learned a lot about my life. I learned a lot about how to make really bad decisions. And I learned a lot about the human body and the bad things that happen to the human body. And that was all really too much for me. I couldn't, I couldn't take it, so I dropped out of nursing school. And I did have a boyfriend. I met a boyfriend in nursing school, not a doctor, he was a student. <laughs> And our relationship at the time was really great, but over time, something started to change, and I found out that he was stealing drugs from the hospital. Mm -hmm. And our relationship became lies, and it became mentally and physically abusive. And that's when I learned to hide, and that's when I learned to let fear take over. Fear is defined in Webster's Dictionary as a painful emotion, excited by an expectation of evil. Fear is an uneasiness of the mind upon the thought of future evil likely to befall us. Fear leads to anxiety, and anxiety is the physical release of fear. Have you ever had a panic attack or an anxiety attack? Because I have. You feel like you can't breathe, and your heart's racing, and you're paralyzed with the fear of what's happening to you. That only leads to more fear and more anxiety, and the more you feel you need to be in control, the more your own flaws start to stand out to you. And the devil takes our flaws and he breaks us down even further. Eventually, the panic does subside, but it's only after you surrender your control and let go of the control. It doesn't matter how much you plan or how much you control, or how much control you have over your life, God's will is ultimately going to be done. That's right, Megan. If you have an expectation of something that's worldly, then you're just setting yourself up for the devil to get a foothold on your life. Mm -hmm. In 2012, my mom passed away from cancer, and I remember being so mad at myself 
and being so angry that I let her down and that I didn't do what I was going to do. I didn't graduate from college. I didn't achieve my goals. And I thought, for me to live happily, I have to have a plan and I have to have college education. And after the funeral, I remember my family and my friends were gathered at my home and I didn't want to talk to anyone. I didn't want to see anyone. I didn't want to think about my mom. I just wanted to eat some Southern church lady casserole and get the heck out of there. <laughs> so I took my casserole and I walked through my house where I grew up and I walked into my mom's bedroom and I saw her Bible sitting on her dresser. So I walked past that and I grabbed the remote control from the TV and I, turned, I tried to turn it on, but it didn't turn on. And I just started bawling. I just, tears poured down my face. And probably in the most dramatic voice, I said, God, why can't anything in my life go right? I didn't want to go back out there and face all those people, so I went and I picked up her Bible, and a bookmark fell out of the back. A bookmark that I probably colored in Sunday school when I was four years old, with stickers on it. And underneath there, my mom had written in her handwriting, all these quotes and things that she'd heard over her life, things that she admired, people she admired. And there was two quotes that stood out to me. Um, forgive me because I, I don't remember who quoted them, mm -hmm. um, but I really want to share them with you. The first one was, if your problems are long standing, try kneeling. Mm -hmm. If your problems are long standing, try kneeling. Is that not the best advice you've ever yeah. heard? Okay. And the second one says, do you want to make God laugh? Tell him your plans. <laughs> <laughs> Mic drop, Mom. <laughs> it's okay to be afraid. And it's okay to feel anxiety sometimes. But fear doesn't define you. Yeah. Anxiety doesn't define you. Depression doesn't define you. Panic, anger, your past. None of those things define you. God doesn't want us dwelling in a place of fear. When you dwell in fear, you develop coping mechanisms. Smoking, for example, when I was in nursing school, I started smoking cigarettes. It was a release at first. It was a way for me to cope with stress. And pretty soon it became a habit, and I was smoking a pack a day. When it becomes habitual, you almost don't even realize you're doing it. Eventually, that habit will become a lifestyle. And whatever you make a habit becomes a lifestyle. I want to talk to you about something that happened to me last year here at Heights. Um, <clears throat> I just started serving here, and I was really motivated, and I really loved my greeter position. I still do. I love meeting new people. I love talking to people. Um, but I remember Sunday was my day to come to church and run away from the problems that I had during the week. Monday through Saturday was just survival mode for me. And after a while, I became a leader here, and I really dove into that role, and I loved that too. Um, but one Sunday, I was standing outside of those doors up there. Actually, I don't even think there was a wall there yet, so I don't think there was a door. There was somewhere back there, and I had a full blown panic attack, and I didn't want anyone to know. Um, I didn't want anyone to see me because I had my Sunday face on. I didn't want anybody to see that I was broken, and I just kept saying, "God, get a grip on this! Like, take this away from me!" And then I realized where I was. So I saw some ladies over in the corner and I said, hey, I need you to come pray with me. And I told them what was going on and they prayed over me. And I said, that was the day that I realized that I was using church as a coping mechanism. Mm -hmm. And I know that you probably think, well, that's great. You're in church, right? You're probably thinking that's the best place you can be. But I'm here to tell you that if the devil can get a foothold in your life, he can follow you to church. Mm -hmm. And he can see you wherever you are. It's powerful. The more we are filled with fear, the less room we have for the Holy Spirit to take over inside of us. That's right. Take the things that you think define you and leave them at the cross. Mm -hmm. Give them back to the one who has it all together. I want to share these verses with you. Um, Psalm 27, 1, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Whom shall I be afraid? Joshua 1, 9, have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Isaiah 35, 4, be strong. Do not fear. Your God will come. He will come with a vengeance, with divine retribution, and he will come save you. Mark 5.36, overhearing what they said, Jesus told them, don't be afraid, just believe. 
believe me, there are so many other verses like this in the Bible, I promise you. But what's one thing that they all have in common? They're all talking about fear, and they're all talking about being afraid. But more importantly, they're talking about how God is in control. You have to believe that God will fight for you. And the more that I served, and the more that I got in God's word, and the more I fell in love with Jesus, it became habitual, and now it's becoming a lifestyle. Yeah. So run to God, and don't run away from your problems. Remember that habits become a lifestyle. Get into God's house, make it a habit. Serve on a team, make it a habit. Pray. If you don't know what to pray, take the advice Pastor Josh gave us the first or second day we were here. God, show me. Reveal me your purpose, your plan for me. Change my heart. Don't worry about everybody else's heart. Just change my heart. Show them that you have God in your heart. Fill me, God. Fill me with this Holy Spirit until it's overflowing so you can pour into other people. That's what I did. I just prayed that simple prayer, those three things. And you wouldn't believe me if I told you the last two weeks of my life what God's done in my life. <laughs> Get in God's word and you'll be surprised what God does in your life when you surrender control to him. Would you bow your heads and pray with me?